Hi folks! Well, I've got my uh, volunteer cameraman Matt here with me today and he's brought me some tech from the last century to take to pieces. Um, see if you can guess what it is. So, do you know what it is yet? We've got three very nice looking lenses on this thing. So, what we've got to pull to pieces today is the guts from an old rear projection television. So we haven't got the screen and the mirror at the back but we have got the insides of it. So let's have a look what's in here. So I pulled this tech from the last century because um, yeah we're looking at a set that's about 15 years old now um, so that would have been 2000 or so, which was, well, actually the start of this century, but, um, oh, hello. So, um, this one's an actual cathode ray tube set, it's not one of the more modern DLP digital mirror matrix things. Um, this one's got three cathode ray tubes going up there, and uh, has some lenses on the front that focus them onto a mirror at the back here and then that directs the uh, light over to the front screen and I think this was a 42 inch panel was it Matt? Yep. Something around about 40 inch set um, obviously a bit thicker than they make them these days but it probably had quite good sound because it's got some nice speakers on it and uh, lots of resonant cavity behind them to give it a good bassy sound oh. let's have a look what's going on inside it So you can see it's um, very, very dusty in here. So before I get my fingers dirty, I'm just going to give that a quick hoover. Now lots of people on the internet are going to be watching me do the hoovering. So when Matt was taking this to pieces, apart from having taken lots of the hardware off it, he's tried to keep it electrically intact. And uh, theoretically, we should be able to power this on and if I put a sheet of paper or cardboard in the right place, we should still be able to get an image out of it. Okay, so we've really no idea if this is still going to work. Um, it worked before it was dismantled. Let's see if something exploded. It's already switched on. I guess nothing exploded. That's a good sign. Got a light. We've got some image. Ooh. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Red, green and blue one there. So um, you should be able to see and hopefully it comes out on the camera. It might be, there we are, the red one looks quite good. Um, you can see our snowstorm pattern because we've got no signal broken out into red snowstorm, green snowstorm and blue snowstorm. And hopefully, if we get this in the right kind of position, Try further up, Jim. Further up. Oh, there we go. That's quite good. Let me get down a bit. Lovely snowstorm pattern there. There we go. So, in the middle of the page here, where things are actually lining up properly, I don't know if it's coming through on the camera, but we've got an actual black and white strip there, rather than the coloured dots we can see elsewhere. And that'll be the place where I've actually got this properly in focus and the three guns are lining up. Was the mirror in this curved or flat, Matt? Uh, flat. It was a flat mirror. We've actually got quite a wide throw on that, all the way from one end to the other. Need to get a signal going in there. Yeah. Does it have a menu on it? No. Nope. So we're having a bit of trouble finding a signal to run this thing, so um, I've plugged in my old camcorder into the SCART input because it's actually got an analog output. Everything's got HDMI these days, so I'll point that at one of my power supplies and we should be able to get, there we go, there we have the image from the other camcorder. Oh, it's quite well in focus there. I can get the whole thing looking like an actual picture. But anyway, so you can see how it works. The, the red, the green and the blue are all 
focused at the mirror at the back and then that reflects the image onto a translucent screen at the front that you sit in front of to watch. And these three little cathode ray tubes, yeah. um, they basically overdrive standard cathode ray tubes to get higher brightness. Um, we'll pull one of those to pieces, I think, have a look what they've actually done. But the set still works, we've even got working audio. Ask away then, Matt. So just the order we're going in is power. I thought you were going to ask me a question. Yeah. <laughs> this is a uh, danger zone though, isn't it, Jim? Like power's coming in. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you shouldn't go poking around inside old TV sets, particularly when they've been on, as this one has, because uh, these capacitors can store quite a chunk of voltage. And uh, if you're underneath the circuit board, then it's important to make sure your capacitor are discharged. Um, so when I come to desolder this, I'm going to be a bit more careful and make sure the capacitors are empty. Um, these cables all carry um, many kilovolts. Um, depends on whether it's colour or black and white, but you can bet these are going to be somewhere in excess of 15 kilovolts, um, up to about 25, 40, depending on what the set is. The so um, side lo lots of danger. Um, over this side... We've got our input board and our tuner, and you can see they've actually used a different circuit board. This green circuit board is all going to be relatively safe. That's all low voltage signal processing, logic, that could be generating the menu system. And that then feeds the signals across to the actual driver board. Um, and you can see we've actually got three separate driver circuits, one for red, one for green, and one for blue there. And those are handily labelled, yeah, handily labelled and uh, handily wired up to the red, green and blue cathode ray tubes respectively. Um, somewhere in here I suspect this bit here is our audio amplifier for our 215 watt speakers. Um, but what I want to do next is have a look at one of these cathode ray tubes and um, take the lens off it and see what they're doing for the filtering to get red, green and blue because I'm curious to know whether they've got red, green and blue phosphors on the guns or whether they're using some kind of lighting gel behind these lenses. And I want to have a look and see what size the screens are, because I suspect these CRTs are very small, sort of oscilloscope size screens. And um, then they're just using these big lenses to spread the image over a huge area. So I'll get my you screwdriver. Need to look out for leaking screws as well. Oh yeah, that's a, a curious one. Um, there's a label down here, I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but it says, attention, the hex head bolts with springs on the CRT assembly are not adjustment screws. Do not loosen, fluid leakage will occur. So I'm uh, very curious as to what fluid's going to leak. and was wondering if they're p potentially using some kind of fluid to get their red, green and blue colours. So, um, well, let's get the screwdriver out and uh, see what we can find. Here's our lens assembly, and we've got um, well, we've got a coloured tint on there, but no obvious sign of an actual blue filter. Uh, I don't know how that looks. I can't see what you're seeing, but upside I presume down. that's upside giving us a tiny hand. little version of my hand in the middle of the lens. Upside down, but yeah. And upside down. Well, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's quite cool. And these lenses have got some kind of uh, oh, that'll be focusing adjustment. So it's got an angled slot. So we can move the lens in and out to focus at slightly different distances. That's sweet. But uh, yeah, very nice little projector lens. Um, oh yeah, I can see my own hand now. But, uh, I bet I can find something good to do with them. They're certainly interesting. So I wonder what's under this metal plate that was under the lens. Let's take this off and see what's under this. And hope we don't get fluid leakage on the carpet. It's just a plate of metal. Hmm. Okay. Some kind of barcode by the looks of it that's been stamped in with a machine tool. Too much light there, isn't it? So I'm guessing that we've got a coloured phosphor. Now we've actually got another lens underneath there. That's a concave which one's which one yeah, concave's the one with holes in, like a cave system. Yep. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a concave lens under there before the convex lens that was bolted on the top. Very interesting. It's certainly a 
significant mounting frame they've got on that. That's a big chunk of cast aluminium they've made for that. Um, I wonder if they're trying to get rid of a lot of heat. Ah, and there's our liquid. Mmm, interesting. Right, I might put this metal plate back on and we'll continue disassembling this outdoors. Because I don't want to get some kind of oil on my carpet. Now that'll be where our liquid leakage comes from. Something inside there. Ah, oh, I think I understand what they're doing now. So they've got the CRT underneath this convex lens, concave lens, will actually be bigger and they're using the concave lens to focus it down to something smaller and then the convex lens, because otherwise they'd need a huge lens for the size of the CRT. And if they take the CRT too small then they'll have problems with not enough brightness from the phosphor. So they've used what looks like a four inch tube behind there I suspect and then they focus it down with this concave lens to something smaller and then the convex lens up to the full size to keep the optics small enough. Uh -huh. Interesting. Right, one more thing we're going to do before we take this outside and dismantle it some more is just have a look at um, how things are without these lenses on. So I'll just whip the other couple of lenses off as well. Oh, and this lens at the end has got some kind of metal bar behind it, so we'll have a look what's going on with that as well. Yeah, now that one is noticeably green behind there. I wonder if they've... I think this is the blue gun, this is the green and this is the red. But, uh, there's some kind of green filter behind that one. Or maybe it is just the liquid that's uh, trapped in the back there. And this one has metal bar there for some reason and again we've got red behind our lens so I think they might be using liquids as the uh, filter gels <laughs> need less yeah. light ah now that's really good because we can even see BBC one on there Almost the remote gone. <laughs> cool now there we are three different little screens red green and blue and as I say, I suspect there's oil behind these lenses that's giving it the colour. But uh, it's just three four inch tellies. Very cute. I think this metal bar will just lift off actually. I don't understand what it's there for, no. You can see the scan line. Very cool. I like that. Oh, ain't that cute? Seems a shame to take it to pieces, but <laughs> I really don't have any use for uh, something this big kicking around to make three little four inch screens work. Uh, I'll unplug that. See if we get a little dot in the centre of each screen and the power goes off. Nah. Right, let's move this outside. Okay, recording. Short bars on the Okay, so we've got all the woodwork removed now and we're still theoretically electrically intact, but I'm going to pull the neck boards off this CRT unit and disconnect all the wires from here now. And um, these should actually just unplug in a fairly straightforward fashion to get us mostly free. These should unplug at this end normally. Get your finger under them. I can't get my finger under them, I'll do them at the other end on the flyback. Should also just unplug. There we go. It's one of our high voltage cables. Now interestingly they've got an arrangement here because they've got three guns and they need a higher drive voltage on this. They've got a standard TV flyback transformer here which will be knocking out 15 to 25 kilovolts on there and they're feeding that into a secondary transformer that'll be upping the voltage again for the three feeds that actually lead off to the three different CRT guns. So should just unplug. There we go. Ah, 
difficult doing it one-handed. Come on. All right, I'm going to stop doing audio because I need my other hand. Okay, so we've been a bit puzzled by this control board in terms of exactly what's going on. Um, it's got sets of controls for each of red, green and blue channels. And one set's labelled focus and one set's labelled screen. And I figured this was the brightness in some way, but um, it's not how I'm familiar with seeing it on old CRTs, because the controls out of there are actually coming down to the base of the tube, rather than controlling the flyback transformer in some way. And I've realised what they've done here on these tubes, because they need to be particularly high brightness, they've increased the grid voltage, which focuses and accelerates the electron beam from the back before it hits the focusing coil, but they've increased that grid voltage to obviously several thousand volts, and that's coming in at the back of the tube on this separate little individual isolated pin. So that's how they've increased the brightness of this CRT over a conventional one. That's why these are projection CRTs, either direct or rear projection. So we're now dismantled into our component parts. We've got a pile of chipboard, which will um, probably end up heating the garden, burn that in the chimney. Um, we've got the front panel and the infrared sensor there. Um, all these wires just unplugged. We haven't taken any more screws out. All the circuit boards together, and we've got our CRT assembly there, and we're going to take the oil out of that now. one of our apparently plastic lenses. That's where we're getting our green colour from. We've got a bit of a green tint on that one and I'm guessing this one will be a red tint. Get it to come. There we go. A nice red lens as well. Slightly oily. So we can pull off these frames now and uh, actually just have a quick look in there and you can see this TV's had over, you know, a decade and a half of use, and you can see how the phosphor actually burnt away there, which will have uh, greatly reduced the brightness of it. And it looks like the green has burnt more than the blue and the red, so I imagine this TV was starting to get a bit of a purpley tint to it. So I rather like these connectors, they're quite cute. They're, um, they're just kind of on hinged, hinged mounts, so the board can be worked on. And that's our signal processing board. Nice and clean on the underneath. Okay folks, so here's the treasures I'm keeping. Um, I'm going to pull a bunch of components off those circuit boards, the audio amplifiers, all the power transistors, um, pretty much anything with a heat sink on it, diodes, electrolytic capacitors, power transistors. I'll keep the flyback transformers, but the rest of those boards will make their way through to the dump. I'm um, going to keep the lenses and the colour filters keeping the lens assembly from the green one because it's flat front on and I'm going to keep those three CRTs even though they're badly burnt in just for kind of general curiosity they'll do no harm sitting on a shelf in the garage and um, I'm keeping the oil we drained out of the lenses as well I'm not sure why but I'm sure it'll come in useful and the uh, excellent pile of screws and springs that came out of this set as well so all of that's on the keep pile well, I hope you enjoyed that folks. Um, I'm going to have to stop filming for the day because uh, the kids are back from their holiday now so things have got very noisy around here. Um, so, yep, that was what was inside a rear projection television from uh, the turn of the century. Anyway, cheers folks. Have a good weekend. See you next time. Bye.